I've been in this studio space since last October and an awful lot has happened since then. So perhaps it's time I showed you around properly. I made around 80 videos for this channel in our back bedroom at home. It's where the Mark Ellis Reviews brand was born, nurtured and turned into this thing that is now somehow a full-time job. I began renting this studio or office actually as it is. I just call it the studio because that sounds cooler. But I started renting it back in October 2021 and it was kind of a measured risk and a bit of a punt. My channel is after all still beneath the 100,000 subscriber mark. But despite that, I just thought, well, why not go for it? So today I thought I'd give you a proper walk around so you can see exactly what goes on behind the scenes and what I have planned for the future. So we'll start downstairs. So basically, as you come in via the front entrance to my right, you end up in this room, which is the downstairs, basically. Very small room. Generally speaking, this is just the area where I come in in the morning and park my bike, which I'll show you in a second. And that's it, really. There's not much room in here to do much else. What I did do, however, is install a basketball net. As you can see down here, I have a little basketball, tiny little basketball. And occasionally, I'll just come down here and this will be interesting, have a bit of a so this is the Fido bike that I was talking about. It's fully electric, it's got pedal assist, um, but it's also got a kind of full on electric mode where you twist this handle over here. So this has got a proper little, little throttle on it. It's a nippy little thing, it's, um, it's great. And because this studio is only a mile from my house, it's just perfect to kind of whiz, whiz there, whiz here on that little thing there. Um, what else have we got? We also have the boundary alarm system. So the studio is now fully alarmed. I did a video about this a little while ago, which I'll link to above. Okay, next, this isn't particularly exciting, but I might as well show you it. This is the kitchen. Very, very small kitchen. You couldn't really cook a full meal in here. I do have my favorite mug here, which is the Yeti. I'll put a link in the description to this. Um, I've got Patrick Rambles to thank for this. Patrick has a brilliant YouTube channel, brilliant tech YouTube channel. Um, I just noticed that he had one of these on his desk. I like the look of it and I got one. I have a Bosch capsule coffee maker thing, which is a bit of a cheat, but it just means I can very quickly make myself a cappuccino if I need to. Anyway, light off, save electricity. Uh, the next room, I won't bother showing you because it's the bathroom. There is some storage, which I use. Again, if you get into tech YouTube, you will have shed loads of stuff that you need to kind of file away, boxes, soundproofing, various other things, DIY bits dog bed for Eddie if he ever comes in. Again, not very exciting. And that is pretty much it downstairs. The only other thing to mention is this couch down here, which is a recent addition, and it's gonna play a much bigger role upstairs. But that's downstairs. I'm gonna now transport you upstairs by magic. I've always wanted to do that. It's I've picked the hottest day of the year to do this, so if I'm sweating, I apologize. Um, but you're now upstairs in the studio, and this is the area you are probably most familiar with if you're a regular viewer. The first thing to show you is this plant, which is the only real plant in this studio. The rest of them are all fake. Uh, but yet, to the right of that is this kind of chill out area. I don't do any work here. This is just a, like I say, chill out area where I kind of sit down and go through messages and things. It features this wonderful, very comfy chair from Ikea. I've also got one of these weird hand things from Ikea as well. I don't know why I bought it. I don't really do anything with it. I think it might have featured in one or two videos. To the right of that, there is a present, a moving in present for the studio from my girlfriend. And the reason it's facing down at the moment is because it's got the studio address on it. Basically, she got me this kind of framed version of the studio's letting agent thing, which was very lovely of her. Um, but I can't show you it because it has the address on and I don't really want to advertise that on the internet. Next up, we have a Fender Strat guitar. A lot of people have asked, and no, it's not mine, and no, I don't play. Uh, this is actually my dad's. Uh, my mum and dad basically moved house recently and needed somewhere to put certain things. So there are, there are some random things in the studio which belong to my parents. Uh, moving to the right-hand side, we have the newest addition to this studio, which is this desk from home. Uh, before I get to that, we do have the most one of the most useful tools in this studio, which is a set of steps. Now, if you're going to get into tech YouTube, basically you'll need a set of steps because quite often you'll be taking 
photos for thumbnails or just certain footage that needs to be taken at quite a high angle. And trust me, steps are absolutely vital for that task. As I say, we have a new addition to the studio, which is this desk, which I had lying around at home. This contains a lot of stuff. I tend to put all of the review units that I receive firstly on this desk. So when I get sent something, it gets unpackaged and lobbed onto this desk. And as a result of that, there's some very random things on here. I probably can't show you all of them in detail. Um, I can show you these. These are from Govi. I really like Govi stuff. Govi basically make lots of different kind of smart home devices and in particular lighting. So these are, well, one of these is basically a light for behind a TV and the other one is a light strip that you can put onto the wall and turn into like different shapes and things. What are these? Yeah, a bunch of cases for the S22 Ultra, a random headphone stand, which is pretty good. If you've got multiple headphones, it's quite nice. There's a bunch of Eufy home security things up here, which I'll be doing something with fairly soon. If you haven't seen it already, probably can talk about those. They are the Liberty Pro from Soundcore. Uh, in ears. I want to basically compare these against the likes of the AirPods Pro. And this is actually the lens that I've got on the camera at the moment. It's the Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 DG DN, very catchy name. Um, if you want a really good 24 to 70 lens for either your Canon or your Sony camera, this is such a good option. It's really, really sharp. We have some phones here as well. There's some Android stuff here. I think one of these, yeah, one of these is the Pixel 4a, which is one of my favorite phones ever. Uh, there's the iPhone SE, the 2020, the, sorry, 2022 version, which I've been rocking for a little while now. And then a kind of, well, this came from the old studio. This is my, basically my gear cabinet um, or my kind of cable cabinet. Uh, there's all sorts of rubbish in here. So cleaning cloths, old phone cases and loads and loads of cables. Again, if you ever start doing this YouTube thing for tech, you will end up with lots and lots of cables. And this is just a very nice way of hiding all this stuff away. Got some batteries in there, more batteries. Oh, two more phones as well. Some Marcos Review stickers. I might be making these at some stage. I'm not making them, but I might be offering these at some stage if you want to grab a few, let me know. There's an A3 pad here, which I'm using along with some Sharpies to sketch out a few ideas for the business. Over here, we have another Govi light. This is one of their strip lights. This is really cool, actually. You can change the color of it. Uh, let me show you. It does come with a little remote here. I can basically change the color. There we go. All of this is controllable via Alexa as well, if you want to. Next up, we have the workbench, which is this area over here. This is always a real mess, so I apologize in advance. Let me just flip the camera around. So this desk is basically reserved for setting up camera gear and occasionally setting up review units. And it does also house my old 27 inch iMac from 2017. I don't use this much at the moment. It's kind of intended to be used as a beta test station. So I've got a, an old iPhone down there as well, which is set up with the iOS beta program. This is my inner tech tech organizer. It's this kind of little bag with lots and lots of compartments for all your cables and things and memory cards and stuff. I take this with me absolutely everywhere. I will put a link in the description. It's been very popular with my audience actually. I think a lot of people like this thing. Memory card holder. You get through lots of memory cards in this job as you can imagine. This is, a little story behind this, this is the Sony A7S II, which is the camera that I pretty much built this channel on. So most of the videos that were filmed in my old studio at home were filmed on this camera. It's a dreadful camera for YouTube. It doesn't have decent autofocus. It has a recording limit, I think of about 25 minutes. It's just pretty dreadful all round, but it has fantastic image quality. And more importantly, it was the main 4K, in fact, it was the only 4K camera I had to hand. I used that camera for about 80 videos, I think, before I got this one, which is the, the FX3 that I'm filming on now. And also it's had a new lease of life recently as my main stills camera. It's got a G Master 
24 mil 1.4 lens on there, which is a expensive but wonderful lens. All of the B-roll, sorry, not all of the A-roll rather, I shoot is shot on this lens. So everything you see on the main set is, is done with this. There's also a screen cleaner and kind of screen cloth thing here. Got lots and lots of these. Again, if you work in tech YouTube, you will have to get yourself quite a few of these things because you will be forever cleaning screens. To the right of that we have a new router which I'll be talking about very soon on this channel. I don't think that video will have gone out before this one. If it has I will link above. If it hasn't stay tuned. I've got my daily carry bag here. This is the Neo Smart Neo Urban. Really nice bag. It's got this great big kind of roll top thing at the top and a huge compartment inside. Fits a 16 inch MacBook Pro very nicely and lots of other things. So that is the workbench. The next area is this, which is, well, was my main desk, but it has been replaced and I'll explain why in a moment. So this is a desk from Flexispot. I can't remember the exact model. I'll put a link in the description, um, but it's lovely. It's a really nice quality desk. It's got this lovely metal frame. You can get this in different colors. I went for the black version. I think there's a white version as well. And the top I went for, I think is the mahogany top very good quality stuff these aren't expensive desks actually they're um they've been sent to me each time which is lovely um but they're not very expensive i would 100 percent buy one if they hadn't been sent to me it's got obviously all the controls here which you can set your own heights for your own presets i can set one for, for standing obviously for sitting there's a pair of airpods max there great headphones but far too expensive there is a random sand disk um, external ssd i use these for all of my editing duties on the macbook pro there's a case there for a ipad mini not sure why that's on there but there you go now this is my main editing desk so i mentioned earlier that i'm not using the other one anymore and that is because i have another new flexispot desk now this is the eg8 and whenever i do one of these studio tour videos it does feel like i always have a new flexispot desk to show you and that's because i have because they are very kind people they tend to send me these things and they ask that i talk about them in these videos and i do it because they are utterly wonderful desks this is the latest one it's the eg8 and i think it might be my favorite one so far it's a multifunctional standing desk with programmable height presets, a locking function and USB charging. It's also got this really cool embedded drawer. And like every FlexiSpot desk I've ever used, it's super easy to put together. You don't really need any tools. It's just Allen key bolts. And it was very, very quick. In fact, it was the quickest FlexiSpot desk I've ever had to put together. Very, very simple. The version I have here has this tempered glass, this white finish all round. It really is a very nice thing. I think it looks absolutely fantastic and it particularly looks nice with what I have on it, which I'll come on to in a moment. But if you fancy grabbing your own FlexiSpot desk, they're currently running a brand sale of up to 38% off between now and the 25th of May. I'll put a link in the description. In terms of what's on this desk, I have my very important 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is my main production machine. So all of my video editing, audio editing takes place on this laptop. It's the M1 Max version, 32 gig of RAM, two terabyte hard drive or SSD rather. And it's great. It just, yeah, smashes through everything I do with it. It's got a built-in SD card slot, as you can see there, which is so, so useful. And I pair it with these sand disks, which I mentioned earlier. Um, all of my video editing goes through these. They're fast, rugged. I also have a pair of Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros. These are now my main monitoring headphones. They are utterly wonderful. There's also a Keychron K2 mechanical keyboard. I got into mechanical keyboards a couple of years ago. I have made some videos on them. I love Keychron stuff. It's not particularly expensive. And the K2 is just great. It's a lovely keyboard. MX Master 3. This is the Logitech mouse that I'm always going on about. It's incredibly ergonomic, really fun to use, very configurable. And it's a, a video editor's dream, really. It's just so easy to fly through Final Cut Pro with that thing. This is a leather desk mat from Satechi. It's great. It's just nice to put your stuff on, nice and comfortable, looks good. We then have my iPad Pro. This is the 2018 12.9 inch version, which at the moment is pretty much just used for brain.fm. I did make a video about this, which I'll link to above or in the video description, which is a app for helping you focus. So it basically pipes 
focus-based music into your head. It sounds a bit gimmicky, but it really, really works. And this sits on a stand. This is the MagFlow stand. It's got this aluminium base. It looks like Apple could have made it, and it's magnetized, so your iPad just attaches to it via magnets. It has this lovely cable management, this great little kind of angled USB cable that comes with it, which is braided. This is a studio display from Apple. I have mixed feelings about this, this display. It's wonderful. It's got lovely image quality, as you would expect from Apple, but it's incredibly expensive, and it's got a terrible webcam. I've, I've mentioned this quite a few times. I won't bore you with it now, but the webcam is pretty rough. It's, it's a really tricky product to recommend because it's so expensive. Next up, we have a very important desk over here, but before I get to that, uh, we have this robot Hoover. This is a dream robot Hoover sent to me free of charge. Very kind of the brand. I haven't reviewed it just because I don't really want to review robot Hoovers. To the right of that, we have something which, again, regular viewers will recognize, which is my 16 gigabyte M1 Mac Mini. And basically, I pretty much started this business and grew this business with this computer. If you're looking for a kind of cheaper, more cost-effective way to get into the Mac ecosystem. It is just superb. Now, this is still hooked up to my 34-inch MSI ultra-wide monitor. I love this thing. It's not as sharp as, the, you know, like a studio display from Apple. It's not retina quality, but it is very wide and it gives you lots of screen estate. So, I do still like sitting at this desk and doing stuff occasionally. I don't do any kind of production stuff from here. It's more a case of occasionally writing, doing email. Office type things tend to happen now on this computer. I just can't bring myself to get rid of it. Attached to that, apart from the MSI, we have a iQuinix F96 keyboard. There is also an iFi Zendac, which is a DAC slash headphone amp. I'm not really using that at the moment, but it's a great option if you want to get into audio file stuff and not spend too much money to begin with. There's also the play date here from Panic. Uh, I reviewed this recently, I'll put a link in the description. Basically a little handheld computing device. It's a really interesting little thing. Uh, it's not really for me, I'm not much of a gamer these days, um, but if you're into kind of casual gaming and fancy something a bit unique, it's worth looking at. I do have a Apple Magic Mouse on here. I take the mickey out of this quite a bit on my blog because of the stupid charging method. If you don't know, you have to charge it upside down. Down. There is a Logic Keys to Go. This is a wonderful option if you want a very kind of cost-effective, thin, long battery life keyboard for your iPad or something like that. This is the iPad Mini, which is sitting on a Benx Infinity stand, and it turns it into this kind of mini, almost like a mini iMac. <laughs> it's a really interesting way of using your iPad. Now, the iPad Mini as well, you've can't really see it on this video, but it has a paper-like attached. And paper-like is this kind of screen protector slash paper-like feel for the iPad. And it turns the iPad into a brilliant note-taking device because, it, as you'd guess, it feels more like paper when you're using it. I'll put a link in the description to paper-like so you can check them out. But basically, if I get an iPad now, I put a paper like on it pretty much straight away because I absolutely love it. Right, next up we have my main set. Now this is where I film all of my A-roll. So you'll be very, very familiar with this angle here, roughly. So that's pretty much what you normally see on my videos. That's where I sit down and ramble on about MacBooks and headphones and things. So first things first, we have this cabinet here from, you guessed it, Ikea. This is full of really random things. So if we start at the bottom, there are a bunch of headphone cases. I do lots of headphone reviews, so I do end up with lots of different headphone cases, as you can see here. Above that, we have a pair of, well, these are B&O. H9s, I think they are. They are wonderful headphones. They are sitting on a Benks headphone stand. This is one of the most popular accessories I've ever featured on the channel. Benks are a wonderful company. They make very high quality, affordable, accessories and it's designed for the AirPods Max but it will fit any kind of headphones pretty much. Any, any over-ear headphones will look lovely on this thing. I've then got a basketball that is a, as a result of having the basketball net downstairs but it is full size and yeah a bit noisy as you can imagine downstairs. Above that I have a cushion. This is a Throw Boys cushion which was very kindly sent to me by Rob, my podcast co-host for the 8 or 16 podcast. Thank you Rob, I do love these things. That's obviously the beach ball of death. There's another one up here, which is a, a finder. This lamp, I think, came from 
Sainsbury's, I think, in the UK. Uh, we've got some books, some random books. There's Shoe Dog. Rework's a really good book. And then a couple of books that I read when I was first starting the channel. So we've got uh, YouTube Secrets by uh, Sean Cannell and uh, Benji Travis. That's a really good book. Uh, Primal Branding's worth a read. And The Third Door is brilliant. I won't tell you what it's about, but if you like businessy type stories and business adventure business adventures it's worth reading as are these two books by austin cleon uh, still like an artist and show your work they are brilliant there's this as well which is a divoom i think it's just called a divoom most youtubers have one of these because they always get sent to, to youtubers uh, this one hasn't been charged but it's like a kind of little miniature computer thing which is very cute you can play games on it it acts as a bluetooth speaker as well and it looks really good in b-roll now above that we have a marketless reviews hat which was very very kindly given to me by my family who um kind of we were celebrating 20,000 subscribers i think at that point and they had this hat made for me which is lovely there's a bunch of over ear noise cancelling headphones which i reviewed recently i'll put a link in the description to that video next up we have an xbox fridge if you don't know anything about these google xbox fridge and it will all become clear but this is basically not a console it is a fridge now if we come over here this is a rather wonderful deconstructed iphone 4s which was sent to me by a company whose name has completely escaped me, but I'll link to in the, in the description. And basically they, they take apart iPhones and Apple Watches. I have an Apple Watch version actually over in the corner, which I didn't show you earlier, but same sort of thing. They take apart these devices and encase them like this. And they kind of label everything and you get a nice quote from Steve Jobs somewhere. There we go. We then have this kind of, again, Ikea unit full of rubbish really it's full of things like head again headphones filters some mics i don't get much out of this really um it's just somewhere to dump things that i'll probably never ever use again and then we have this which you will see this all the time in the videos because it's always behind me i just put random things on here including this which is a mac mini but it's not an m1 mac mini it's a old intel mac mini from i think about 2012. there are some keyboards including a vissels i think it's called vissels vissels why are products so difficult to pronounce these days i'd love to know that and um, that's the one at the back anyway it's a, a wonderful keyboard i'll put a link in the description we have another Banks headphone stand. This is the white version, which I think is particularly lovely, actually. Um, and on top of that one, we have the Sony XM4s. Depending on when this video is published, I may have reviewed the XM5s by that point. But at the moment, at the time of filming, these remain my favourite ever over-ear noise-cancelling headphones. They are absolutely fantastic and to the right of those we have this which is a lego land rover defender which i bought myself for christmas and spent most of the weeks after christmas building it was incredibly therapeutic i love lego always have done um, but the detail this thing goes to it's just ridiculous it's got working gears it's got kind of you know obviously working doors and stuff but um everything operates almost like the real thing uh, you can see all the gears and stuff in there it's um it's lovely next up we have the main set this is where i film all of my a-roll so when i'm talking to you guys this is basically what i can see i sit here and have the camera in front of me here i now use an auto cue which is something that has made a massive difference to the way that i film my videos uh, to the left of that i have a great big key light then all my audio stuff over here another fill light here just to kind of brighten me up on on one side and a desk which has these panels stuck to them which i've added recently these are basically sound panels which just deaden the sound a little bit beneath me now one thing i can't show you is the camera because i'm filming with it now but it is a sony fx3 which is a wonderful 4k camera quite a big investment for this business but it was worth it because it's got incredible autofocus beautiful image quality and no recording limit it's just wonderful so that is my main camera and we'll just very quickly go through what we've got here so this is a zoom l12 mixer slash audio interface i used to use this for the audio for my videos i don't anymore because i've run into a few issues with it but it is used for the 8 or 16 podcast so that teamed with basically the shaw smb which is over here 
SM7B, apologies. The right of that, we have, like I say, this GVM fill light, which can be changed color if I need to, but it's pretty much always stationed here, just on my right hand side, just to kind of give me enough light on my face. This is a Zoom H4n Pro. It's a tiny little audio recorder. I've used it since the start of the, the channel, basically. And since I had the issues with the L12, I started using this for the videos. And basically this connects via an XLR cable up here, up this C stand into the Rode NTG-1, which is a lovely mic, not particularly expensive. A lot of people ask me how I get the mic sound. Basically this mic, plus some editing and a bit of uh, magic sauce, if you like, in uh, Logic Pro, is how I get my audio. The camera, sits on this tripod, which has seen better days. This this has been through quite a lot, this tripod. I've used it for all sorts of work. It's a Viltrox, I can't remember the, remember the exact uh, model. I'll put a link in the description. Above that, we have a Glide Gear Auto Q, which I mentioned earlier. I've only just started using this. I think I've filmed about six or seven videos now with an Auto Q. I got to the stage where I just had to start using this thing because I was working for bullet points from an iPad and I was just struggling with it. I was finding it really difficult to, to do decent A-roll. It was just, I don't know, I lost confidence a little bit. And I thought, let's try out a auto cue and see if it works. And I do recommend using one, but don't assume like I did that anyone can do it because it's a real skill. Above here, we have a Amaran 100D, which is from Aperture. It's their kind of lower, not lower end, but it's a, a cheaper version of their big, big lights, uh, big key lights. And it's very good. I mean, it's perfect for what I need. Perfect, bright enough. That is paired with an Aperture Light Dome SE, which is lovely. It gives you this very nice diffused key light. Over here, we have another GVM light, which I use as a fill behind. So normally this is just kind of pointed at my Land Rover Lego Defender and just gives a bit of an extra fill, really. We also have an overhead C stand here. Again, newer, I think this one is by. And any overhead shots you see where I'm doing kind of overhead product photography is done via this stand. It's not properly counterweighted. I do need to do something about that because I do hang this expensive Sony FX3 from it quite often. It's really good for getting really nice overhead B-roll and product unboxings. Over here, we have these great big acoustic curtains. So normally these surround me when I'm doing A-roll. So I place these around the A-roll set, just again, to deaden the sound and keep things nice and acoustically pleasing. It's a bit of a ragtag kind of cobbled together thing with, as you can see, these kind of clamps at the top and what have you. but. It does the job. Lastly, we have my very messy gear cabinet. There's all sorts of old boxes for old review units and stuff on here. But the more important thing is in here, which is my camera storage thing. And the cameras are out at the moment, so that most of them are actually being used. But if I just zoom in here, we can see right at the back a Canon 7D. This was one of my first ever DSLR cameras, so it means quite a lot to me. Below that, we've got the wonderful 5D Mark III, which up until recently was my main stills camera. To the right-hand side of that, we do have some lenses. So we have a 100mm macro lens for Canon, which I use quite a bit at the moment. That's probably gonna get replaced by a Sony version. There's a Sony 50mm there. There is a GoPro at the back, you can just see. There's this great big Sigma 70-200. There's an adapter there for Canon to Sony. But yeah, that's it. That's basically where all the camera kit gets stored. And it's got a boundary sensor on there just to keep things nice and safe. And that is basically the studio. The only thing that I'm gonna change, I say the only thing, it's quite a big thing. I am gonna create a second B set. So that is my main A-roll set that I showed you a moment ago. But I wanna create a second one based around the sofa that I showed you earlier. So that couch downstairs is gonna come up here. And somewhere in here, I'm not sure where yet, I've not decided, but somewhere in here, I'm gonna create a kind of living room set where I'll have the sofa, TV set up, gaming console, all that sort of stuff, just to do some more kind of home techie based reviews. Anyway, back to me over there now. So when it comes to plans for the future, as mentioned earlier, one of the big changes I'm gonna to make to this room is that B set over there for occasionally shooting A roll for when the content needs it. Will I stay here? 
Not for the long term, no. I love this space, but I have learned a lot in my short time here. I think the priorities for the next studio I have will be a quieter location, no noisy road, and dedicated parking. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna get to work in here and make the most of this space. And on that note, if you fancy checking out how I get so much stuff done in a day, keep watching for a link to a video where I reveal the one app that has made me more productive than I have ever been in my entire life.